All right, so now that we kind of saw how motion paths themselves work, let's go ahead and see how paths work with using just lines and to make our own. So what we're going to do is come up here to our create menu and I'm going to click this button here. This is going to give us access to splines. Now there's other options in here, but we're going to focus on the splines. What you'll see here is a number of different basic objects and shapes. So we get things like a helix, if we wanted to make some kind of spiral. We get things like stars. Simple donuts. Generic ellipses. End guns. Some simple arcs. And from there, we can kind of change anything we want to about these. For instance, we can select the spiral, the helix, and we can change all this information from the height to how many times we want it to spiral, differences in the different radii, just kind of whatever it is we want to do and how we want it to be. So we have this. And with these line segments and all, for the most part, you'll see that they lay flat, except for some specific ones like the helix. Now, if we were to get rid of all of these and instead do this in one of our other views, in this case, let's say the front view, we can make the lines. And then as soon as we go back to perspective, it will draw them based on that flat axis. So using that, we can do a whole lot with this. That said, there are a few tips and tricks to make this work. First off, I'm going to choose line. And when I do, before I do anything else, it'll give me options on how I want this thing to work. Well, I'm going to say smooth for the initial type. And then the drag type, I can kind of choose how I want it to be, which I'll leave as busy A. So I'm going to go and just click somewhere. And I'm going to drop the next end of this line over here. Well, because I chose smooth here, it's going to make this as best it can into an arc that fits whatever shape it is I end up trying to make. And depending on what I make, this can be either really nice or it can be a little bit difficult. That said, after I'm done with my pattern, this initial place that's yellow, if I click on it, or at least click close to it, it'll ask if I want to close the spline. If I say no, then I'll keep going. If I say yes, it will lock it together and enclose the shape that I drew, or I guess rather clicked out, into one solid object. So I'll hit escape to get out of line, and let's go ahead and take a look at the modifiers we can do for the line itself. Well, the first thing is we have rendering, which for the most part we don't need to worry about for now. But from there, if we collapse rendering, we'll have these basic options. Now, first we have selection, where I can choose a single vertex, and I can move around these points where I want them to be. Very similar to how we were able to move and control the ones in the motion path. That said, if I also look at this from a different angle, I could lift it and raise it vertically in whatever direction, I guess, or lower, in however direction I want this thing to actually move and stay. So some of these that are a little bit more of a rough edge, they could simply just be a higher or lower point for a more unique angle for what it's trying to work with. And just like that, I can make my own kind of motion paths. That said, we have other things we can do. Because you'll notice these are currently lacking on any other kind of controls beyond their own simple movement. Well, let's take a look at some of the other options we have in here. Well, we can skip soft selection for now and move up here. Well, if we wanted to create new objects, break some of these links apart, refine, do whatever there, not too bad. It, it does the job pretty well. But... Starting off, just to keep things simple, we're going to come down here to a few of these. 
well, weld, we don't need to really worry about. It's only if we have a bunch of these little edges or points next to each other. The main one we're going to take a look at is, is going to be this, fillet. Fillet lets us choose one of these, any one of these points, and by clicking and dragging out, we can create more points to kind of smooth out these curves and theoretically give us a nice, more even and controlled arcs. Now you'll note it does smooth them out and can change the arcs a little bit, but it is pretty good overall in order to keep things nice and even. Because what this does is creates a fillet or an arc between two points to try to even out, smooth, and have a better transition between whatever points it is we are currently looking at. Now if you try to drag this too far, or something isn't quite right, what it can do is kind of deform it just a little bit. But in the end, we're taking the most even basic points of these arcs, these individual little segments, and creating something that's very smooth and useful. However, as we can see down here on this one, these points look like they got just a little bit messed up. So what I'm going to do is just choose this point, and on the keyboard above the arrow keys, just press delete. And in doing so, in doing so, I can make a removal of those points that don't work, and if I really needed it, I could just fillet these points, if it'll give me the right control to do it. That might still be a bit of a problem. There we go. But now I can take these points that are a bit of a problem and rework them into something a little bit more even and better. You know, I think I'm still getting a double up. Yep, I am. So I'm going to go ahead and delete a couple spots in here. There we go. To kind of smooth out and help some of those segments be a little bit better. It's still a little rough, and the angles don't help too much either. But I can go through and fix a lot of it based on a lot of these positions. So I'm going to go ahead and just fix these real quick. That one's going to be a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete this one. And I'll take these new curves, kind of just however they end up being through here. If it really is a problem, I can just come back in and smooth them out. That should be okay. So, what can I really do with this? Well, a lot of that is going to be based heavily upon what I want to do. So, just to kind of make it simple, I'm going to go ahead, go back to my objects, and I'm going to make a cone. You know, I'm going to just kind of make it a little bit smaller with a nice point. Okay. Well, now that I have this little cone, how can I make it move for this path? Well, what this really amounts to is we have this tab up here at the top called the Motion tab. This tab gives me the ability to change how I want things to control. Well, I got basic transform, which is good, but it's not exactly what we want. What we want, for at least now, is going to be this, position, position X, Y, Z. What we're going to do is, with it selected here, we now have access to this, where we can assign a controller. We're going to set a constraint, and now, 
a constraint itself is based on what is going to control something else. So path constraint, pretty simple. So path constraint, I'll say OK, and I get a new option over here. Well, right now, nothing's going to happen on this timeline because I haven't really assigned anything yet. I haven't told it that I want this line to control it. So up here, I'm going to choose Add Path. And I'm going to come over here and select the line. Neat. I'm going to click on Add Path again to be done with it, and I'm going to hit Play. So it's zooming around pretty well. It's going just a little bit fast because it's basing the percentage of start to finish on the timeline that I have down here. If instead I go to Time Configuration, and I'm going to choose Rescale Time, I'm going to set my end time to be, say, 200 seconds, or uh, sorry, 200 frames. Which is going to be roughly 15 seconds. That is incorrect. That's going to be roughly seven, roughly seven seconds. So I'll say OK. And now when I hit play, it's still moving quick on some of these spots, but it's now slowed down pretty heavily. Well, if that's still too fast, I can do the same thing. 300 frames for 10 seconds. And let's see if this is much better. Yeah, I think that's better. But this is just moving on the path. But the question is, what if the tip of this thing was supposed to have been the front side? Well, what I can do is only a couple things. Well, first, I need to take a look at some of my other options on here. Well, as we move, we can see it move, but we can also see here the percentage long path moves. Below it, we have a few other options. The first one is follow, which you'll note as soon as you click, chances are it's going to rotate the object just a little bit. And that's the first thing we need. Well, second, we need bank, but we'll come back to that, which depending on the object, it may or may not matter. For a cone, we're not really going to see it change. So it's it's not really going to help us for this one. But with follow, I'm going to come down here to axes, and I'm going to try flipping it to different ones until it rotates to the right space. So this worked pretty well, not too bad. If the cone was facing the other way, I might flip it, because right now it's going to move like this along the path with the flat edge first. But if I flip, it's going to go with the point. Or at least theoretically it will. You'll note that it's kind of off a little bit. And that's based on the mid-center point, the pivot point, for the object. In this case, the pivot point is the flat bit here. So it's using that to kind of control all the rotation. We're still getting the right effect overall, but that can be a problem depending on what your object looks like. But now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and zoom out, move back to the front, hit play, and now I can see that my cone, or whatever I kind of would want my object to end up being in the end, is now moving and doing everything that it needs to do. So I'm going to stop, rewind, and I'm going to come zoom into my object. Now I'm going to come up, turn on my edged faces, just so I can see things a little bit easier. And with it selected, I'm going to go ahead and right click and choose Convert to Edit Poly. What I'm going to do is going to be real simple. I'm going to just grab two sides like this. Those are those are about even. I'm pretty sure I'm off on my angles just a bit, so they shouldn't be perfectly even. But I'm going to do this and move them back and just kind of freehand it a bit, just so we can kind of see how this thing moves and rotates. Now, I'm doing this for a specific reason. 
Because the object was so perfect in most of its shape, we can't really see all those other options we had back here in the Motion tab really take effect. But if I zoom out and hit play now, it's kind of just turning, following the path, which is what we want it to do, but it's not quite right. Instead, with this selected, if we turn on bank, and you'll see it now, based on the angle of the arcs and how it's calculating it, it's going to try to rotate and spin it based on the angles of the arcs and how they connect. Now, it can be a little bit rough depending on how you built it, but adding bank will add a lot to your file. So I'm going to go ahead and fix a couple things on my line segments that have been bothering me. And I'm going to, it's mostly right through here, just get rid of a handful of these just to make the animation a little bit more smooth for different areas. So I'm going to do this, do it again, just kind of smooth this out, give it some easier transitions. That's about right. And I'll just make it a little bit tighter. Okay, so now that I have that, I'll hit play, and we can kind of watch it go through, turn with the angles it needs to make, it should come through, rotate the other direction, and just give us a little bit better banking to make it a little bit more fly-y-like.